Thank you that he came to die for our sins and make it well with our soul. We pray this morning that he can speak to us, that your Holy Spirit will make it clear the plans that you have for our lives and the way we should walk. Father, we love you. We're thankful for this day. We're thankful for this moment. Help us to put all our cares and concerns to the side so we can just listen to you. Father, we love you. We're grateful to be together in this this seven-mile journey to get closer to you and bring others with us. We love you, Father. Thank you. Fill us with your spirit. Use me as an instrument for your will. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, give a shout out to our worship team, if you would. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. So good to have you here this morning. We are on a seven-mile journey. I got some people in the house that were on a 26.2-mile journey last Sunday. Good to have you guys back in one piece. Okay, I know there's some pains and and things, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to stick with the seven-mile journey. Walking, thank you. Thank you. Just walking to get there. But we're right in the middle of this, and uh, if you're a guest here today, We're doing this series because Jesus made seven statements when He was on the cross. And each one of those statements that He made on the cross are vital for us. They're life-changing. If we'll just listen to what He has to say to us. See, because you and I, we're on this journey, and it's maybe a lot longer than life. We're on this, this journey, and we're right in the middle of it right now. And that's where God is. He's right in the middle. And we really need to to get help on this journey because as you can look around and tell, there's a lot of people stumbling, losing their way. And, And God is holding His hand out. He's saying, if you'll just let me, I'll help you. I'll guide you. And so we've been on this journey and we're looking at this passage in Luke 24, where there was two gentlemen, two followers of Jesus, one of them we don't know his name, but the other one we know his name, his name was Cleo, or Cleopas. We call him Cleo here in in Lighthouse. We feel like we have a relationship with him. We know him, but he wasn't one of the twelve. He wasn't somebody important. And on Easter morning, him and his companion, they're leaving Jerusalem. On the very day that was supposed to be a day of celebration, they're leaving and they're going in the wrong direction. Their heads are hanging low and their heads are shaking back and forth. I thought this was going to work out differently. You see, they put all their hope in Jesus and they they thought that Jesus was going to work things out in a certain way and when Jesus didn't do it the way that they thought, they lost hope. And knowing Jesus, he didn't leave them going in the wrong direction when they should have been going, and he didn't leave the he left the 99 and went after the two. And I just want to encourage you, because this story speaks a lot, that God is willing to leave where he is and go meet the need where we are. But we have to listen and we have to pay attention. And so today we're going we're gonna to continue this journey. I want to just kind of recap. Uh, and we're looking at these seven statements that Jesus made on the cross. The first one that we looked at was in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And when Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And so the first word that we looked at in our seven-mile journey was forgiveness. Huge huge in our lives. It sets us free, and it allows us to set ourselves free by letting other people go and forgiving them of their sins. See, I need forgiveness, but in return, I need to forgive, and it sets us free. The second word that we looked at last week, we talked about we're in the middle, right? Remember? No donuts today, but we, we had some fun last week, and we talked about being in the middle. That's where God is. And this whole idea of salvation See, a lot of people think salvation is a one-time, one-and-done, I'm in, and God's got me. 
And we learned last week that salvation is what? A process. And you and I are in this process. And sometimes God will use our, our journey in the middle to shape us. So these are the first two. Today we're going to look at number three. I hope you're ready because we're no donuts today. Okay, no donuts. And as you can tell, I have, I have this uh, cross up here on the stage. And, you know, I wonder how many Jewish synagogues have a cross in it. But we do today. And it's here for a reason to remind us, to remind us, and, and just so I say it, for a lot of people when we talk about crosses, it gets uncomfortable because we know there was a price that was paid for our salvation. But here's the thing I know, even though there's crosses involved, maybe in my future, I know this, if God is with me in the middle, then I can keep moving forward. And see, that's all we can do is really just keep moving forward. We don't have to have all the answers because we know God's going to provide the answers as we move along. And that's what we saw in the journey with Cleo and his companion. If you just keep walking, just keep walking. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, keep walking. Keep walking. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't give up. It might get difficult. In fact, it has gotten difficult. It has gotten difficult. And so today we're going to talk about this thing called relationship. Relationship. I, I, I feel like some of you are already getting uncomfortable. You need to know this about relationship. The greatest pain and pleasure, you can reverse it if you like, the greatest pleasure and pain you will ever experience in your life will be in the context of relationship. Know this. And I'll say it again for the people in the back who are distracted and talking with each other. Listen, listen, you guys in the back. Yeah, Chris. Hear this. Chris knows this. I know Chris. Chris knows this. The greatest pain and pleasure you will experience in your life will be in the context of relationships. So the tendency is, what kind of relationships do I want to have if I know there's going to be pain wrapped up in it? Right? I'm going to keep people at a safe distance from me because I know the greatest pain that I'll ever feel in, my, feel in my whole life will be because of this relationship. And I don't know if it's going to be this one or if it's this one over here or if it's that one over there. I don't know, but I think my safe place is at a distance. And so today, today, we're going to look at relationships. Okay, and I want you to get ready. So go ahead and tell your neighbor they need to hear it. Get ready. We're going to talk about relationships. Get ready. Get ready. We're going to, we're going to go back to this journey. Now they're ready. They're ready. They're ready. We're going back to this journey with Cleo and his companion. And I want you to, I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. This is so important. Cleo is, is walking with his companion in the wrong direction, in the wrong direction, away from Jerusalem to a place that really isn't significant, Emmaus. And Jesus says, I'm leaving the 99 and I'm going to help Cleo and his companion. And they spend time and they're talking. And after the conversation, look at what happens. They asked each other. Now, this is really important. When, when, you, see, when you see what happens in their conversation, they say this, they said, they asked each other were not our hearts burning in us while we talked, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? See, I've highlighted these words because revelation comes in the context of relationships. See, everything came together, everything came together, not in an isolated, solo journey, just me and my God. 
No, it came in the context of relationships. So, so Cleo and his companion, they, they go back. They got up. The two of them, they got up. They stayed together. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven. And those with them assembled together saying it's true the Lord has risen he has appeared to Simon and the celebration begins but where did the revelation happen when they were together you see even though we don't like relationships sometimes we love them but we hate them we need them because as we can see from this experience Things get revealed to us in relationships when we're together. And so today's message, today we want to we wanna talk about this idea of completing the cross. Completing the cross. Completing the cross. And today's message is specifically for the idea that and it gets tossed around a lot. A lot of religious people will say this and says, as long as I've got Jesus, as long as I've got Jesus, all I need is Jesus. It sounds really good, doesn't it? it sounds spiritual. Or another one, as long as I have Jesus, I don't need anybody else. It sounds really spiritual. And I get it. But the reality is, it's not true. Jesus didn't speak to this. See, because you need to know this about the cross. The cross has two beams. Two beams. One going up and down, and one going side to side. See, in these statements, what they represent is up and down, but the reality is we got to work on this. So today, today, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the people sitting next to you, the people in your family, the people in your neighborhood, the people that you work with. We're going to talk about this. See, because this completes the cross. We like it like this. But Jesus is saying, I want it like this. I want The complete cross. The complete cross. You see, it was on the cross. It was on the cross that all my sins were forgiven. Every single one of them. There were so many. You guys cannot imagine at at 21 years old how many sins were weighing me down. How many things I had done at a young age that hurt people, that hurt my God, that hurt me. That created really significant damage. The things that I was involved in. The people that I hurt. The people that I set on a path to destruction. The people that I influenced for bad, not good. And on the cross, all my guilt, all my shame were hung to die forever. You see, it was all on the cross that all my fears were hung so that I could live a fearless life. See, it was on the cross that all my doubts hung and I could get answers. It's because Jesus resolved the tension of what's this really about? All my hopes were hanging on the cross. And because I had hope now, because Jesus was on the cross for me. You see, it's on the cross that we get our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus, and we get the opportunity to be restored in our relationships. One in particular, my relationship with my dad. I had a very strained relationship with my dad growing up. God bless him, he didn't know better. But I did a bad thing. I responded in kind. And I hated and I resented him. But it was, see, it was at the cross where I learned you got to forgive. You got to let go. You got to take the high road. You got to be like Jesus. And that day that I forgave and that we spoke, our relationship was transformed. 
See, it was on the cross that that happened. Everything was changed on the cross. And see, it's important for us to also understand that at the cross, at the cross, some things are going to come out. See, at the cross, you get revealed. When people get near a cross, what happens? They go, wow, this is a very high price tag. I didn't think it was going to turn out like this. See, Jesus understood the principle of, I'm close to God, but I also need a team around me. Jesus had a team, you know that? And it was a plan. He could have done it by himself, but he shows us, I need a team around me. In very key points in his life, he said, I need you guys to stand with me and pray with me. I need a team. But what happened, what happened to Jesus' team at the cross? What happened to the team when they got close to the cross? You see, Matthew tells us, Matthew tells us this. Then all, all the disciples deserted him and fled. See, Jesus needed this team. He needed these people. But when you get near the cross, when you get re- near things that are going to cause you pain, things that are going to be in, that that include suffering and difficulty, what do you do? I, I, I think I'm going to step away. I think I'm going to move away. So we got. We got Matthew who tells us, he's very open about it, which I love about the Bible. They don't, they, don't, they don't mince words. They tell you exactly what happened, even though it's shameful. See, you got Peter. Peter, Peter said, no, Jesus, I, I will be with you till the very end. I will stand by you. They're having, they're having their last meal together before Jesus went to the cross. And, 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 and Jesus told them straight up, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. And the loudest one in the group Peter, you know what he says? Oh, no, 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 no. No, Jesus, not me. Not me. Not me. I am willing to go even to death with you. And what does Matthew tell us? Even Peter. See, the loudest ones, the loudest ones, when they get near the cross, when they're at the cross, they run. And, you know, what I love about the Scriptures is that even though everybody left, some came back. And at the cross, we, we get a picture. Who was at the cross? Who was at the cross? And I love the gospel. It's one of my favorite gospels of the four, the gospel of John. See, because John wasn't the loud one, but John had some confidence. You know how I know John had some confidence? Because you know how people give you a nickname? John gave himself a nickname. Seriously, read about it. He gave himself a nickname, and you know what he called himself? See, I'm the one, I'm the one, of all the 12, I'm the one that Jesus loved the most. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm the one. See, me and Jesus are like that. And he said it not once. He said it several times. I'm the one. And I appreciate that about John. John straight up tells it like it is, but you see it. And now we're about to see it. See, because when the teacher, Jesus, on the cross, puts out a roll call, he puts out a roll call, he's at the cross, and he says, Peter! Nathaniel! Andrew! Simon the Zealot! You know, it's a bad day, it's a bad day when the teacher shows up for class and nobody's there. But he didn't finish the roll call. He calls out, John! And God bless him. Here, Jesus. See, Matthew doesn't describe who was at the cross because he wasn't there to our knowledge. But John can tell us who was at the cross because John was at the cross. 
And this is a really, really important point because at the cross, at the cross, you're going to see who your real friends are. You're going to see who the people who are going to stand by you. It's one thing for them to stand by you when things are going good, when there's food being handed out, when there's, when there's miracles being given out. And I got healed at the cross. I got healed with Jesus. And he's got some incredible, amazing teaching. But the moment it gets painful, and the moment it goes the way you thought it shouldn't go, see ya. I got to go. See, I got to... I got to take care of me. I got to take care of me. And we have this tendency in our world, in our society, in our relationships, in our families. We have this tendency that when the going gets rough, we get going. We get out. And that's what happens at the cross. But we're going to learn and, and, and hear from, from John. Who was at the cross? Tell us, John. Near, near the cross. Tell us, John. Who was near the cross? Who was right there? Who was right there? Not in the back row. Right there. Right there near the cross. Let's find out. Who was there? Who was there? Near the cross of Jesus stood who? What? If you were Jesus' mom, can we be honest? I mean, this is Mother's Day message right here, but it's not Mother's Day yet. We've got to wait a month. I just got to lift up Mary because what kind of woman, what, what kind of woman would, 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 would stand near Jesus and in the moment that he's dying for not one thing that he did wrong. He did everything right. And he's killed like a criminal, like a common thief. He's put to death and there she is standing by Jesus. Wow. What a woman. What a mom. Who else? John, tell us. His mother, sister. Yeah, it's Aunt, Aunt Mary. Aunt Mary. Aunt Mary. She, she was the wife of Clopas. Clopas, not Cleopas. Clopas, somebody else. And then one other person. Who? A lot of Marys at the near the cross. <laughs> but Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene. You know about Mary Magdalene? You know why she was near the cross? Because Mary Magdalene's life was a complete and utter disaster until Jesus came along. She had seven demons. I mean, it would be enough just to have one, but seven demons? Could you imagine the havoc, the disorder, the, the chaos in your life with seven demons talking to each other and how your relationships would be, how your life would be, your hope would be. And Jesus said, I'm going to get rid of all of that and I'm going to give you a fresh beginning and I'm going to put you in a right relationship with your Father and I'm going to give you, Mary, a relationship with me and your sisters. So here's near, who's near the cross. Where, where are the rest of them? I want you to know this. One week earlier, one week earlier, Palm Sunday, there are thousands of people lining the streets, throwing a parade for Jesus. It was really loud. It was super loud. Hosanna, the kids were screaming. They had palm leaves and they were waving them. They were laying them down on the street. Everybody was jumping and shouting and they were saying, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Just one week, one week before. There was a parade for Jesus. It was loud. Here, it's quiet. It's quiet. And the crowds got real thin at the cross. That speaks to us, guys. See, because there wasn't any more food being distributed. There weren't any more miracles and healings and teaching it was all difficulty now. It was all pain. It was all hardship. It got quiet. It got really quiet. And, and Jesus on the cross in this moment, in this moment, look at what Jesus does. And this is our third statement. This is our third statement. When Jesus saw his mom, bam, he saw his mom there with the disciple whom he loved, Standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, 
from now on, from now on, I'm going to reorder the family. This is your son. You know why he's your son? Because he's here with you in this moment. See, he stood by you. He stood by me in the difficulty. So, so Mary, my mom, mom, you need someone who's going to stand by you in the difficulty. Mom, you're going to be want to have somebody next to you when things get difficult because your brother Judas or your other son Judas and your other son James, they're not here. They don't even believe in me. So I'm giving you John. And then he looks at John and he says, and to the other disciple, John, he didn't even say his name. To the other disciple, he said, John, I want you to take care of my mom. I want you to look after her because she needs someone faithful. She needs a relationship that's faithful. Not, 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 you know, up and down, in and out, distant. Here, I'm here with you today, but I don't know about tomorrow. If it gets a little bit difficult and inconvenient for me, I'm out. From that time on, look at this. This is, this is incredible. From that time on, this disciple took her into to his home. She had a home. Now she had a home. But out of obedience to Jesus, and out of reverence and out of need, she chose the relationship, and he chose the relationship that Jesus ordered. Jesus ordered, guys. And see, Jesus, Jesus wants us to have a relationship with God, but he's also, he's also asking us, will you be in relationship with other people? Or are you going to be just like the rest? That when it's a time for a need, you're there, but if you don't need him, you won't be there. This is a really, really big deal today. On, can, can I be honest with you guys? On, because this is a challenging teaching for me. You see, it's at the cross, you know, and, and my tendency is, can I just be honest? My tendency is, I, I can get focused on the people who aren't there. And Jesus could have been focused on who wasn't there at the cross, right? He could have been like me, you know, mm, Peter. I knew he would do it. I knew he wouldn't show up. Ooh, and that Judas, man, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get Judas. I'm going to get Judas because he, he, he sold out for silver. He sold me out. No, that's not Jesus. Jesus is not focused on who's not there. Who's Jesus focused on? See, and this challenges me, guys, because I get focused on who's not here. And you can get focused on who's not here. And that's going to happen. There's going to be people who walk away. And you have to decide who is, going, who is going to be your focus. The people who are standing at the cross are those that have left. And the cross always thins it out. And see, Jesus didn't focus on Judas. And he wasn't mad at Judas. Do you know Why? He needed John. He needed John to stand by him, but he needed, he needed, he needed Judas to get him to the cross. To the cross. See, sometimes those people that hurt you the most, you know who I'm talking about? Come, come quickly to mind. If you're like me, they come right up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do I know? Do I know who hurt me? I got him right here. See, and there's something wrong with that. See, because we need to change the way we look at our maybe enemies, people that have hurt us. And we need to realize, hey, you know, if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for Judas, Jesus wouldn't have made it to the cross. He needed Judas to get to the cross. See, God will even use people who hurt you to get you where you need to go. He will use those unfaithful, no count, good for nothing people to shape your walk with God and your character. And you need to embrace that. You need to embrace that because those people who bring you to the cross 
are just as important to the people that stand by the cross with you. So we look at this idea, and this is the the thought, is the people who hurt you the most actually help you get to the place where you need to be. As much as I don't like it, i got to give them credit. I hate to give those people credit, but i got to give them credit. God will use them. And I thank God for them. I thank God for those challenges. It's not logical. It doesn't make sense, but it got me here. It got me here, and I'm thankful, and I'm growing, and I'm on my way. I'm on my way. And so this is what we want to focus on today as our word at the cross, relationship, where Jesus said on the cross, and and can we just stop for a moment and think about Jesus is gasping for air. He he can't breathe. He's, He's hanging. His life is hanging by a thread. He's about to suffocate. He's got a crown of thorns on his head. He's got nails in his wrists and his feet. He's bleeding from the back. His back is hamburger meat, just shredded, bleeding. He's no blood, no air, and searing pain. And who's he thinking about? Mom and John. If you're like me, when you're in pain, you can't think about anybody else. You can't think about anyone or anything else, and that's why Jesus is our Savior, and that's why Jesus is our Lord, because He's hanging on the cross for our sins, and even in that moment, He's still thinking about your needs and my needs. Can we just give a little praise this morning to our Lord and Savior, Jesus? Can you give it up? Can you give it up for Jesus today? Man, the faithfulness of Jesus in that moment. And so we got to look at our own relationships and ask the question, you know, am I, am I that in? Am I that faithful to people? See, because Jesus, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago or last week, Jesus didn't just take us on up. We're, we're still here. We're waiting for the day. But in that, in that moment, we need to be like him. And, and this is one thing that we have to be asking ourselves. What effect do people have on you? How do they mess with you? People who hurt you? Or people that you need? It's a great question. Are you too needy? Are you too needy? See, because a lot of us are in a relationship for one reason only. What can I get out of this? And we agree, oh yeah, I need relationships, but I need relationships for me. And that's not the way it works. See, if you got it like this, if you got it like this, you give it like that. You give it like that. You don't take it. You don't take it like that. You give it like that. So go ahead and tell your neighbor, I got it like this. I got it like this. Go ahead. It's all right. I got it like this. I got it like this. I got it like this. Brandon, I got it like this. I got it like this. So, so, here, you got to finish the statement. We've got to finish the statement. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it like this. Okay, and you look at him. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it. See, I'm not here to take. Jesus already, Jesus already gave me. God already gave me. But some of us are in relationship for one thing only. We want to take. We're just like Jesus in the beginning where we want to take from Him. I want the healing. I want the teaching. I want the free food. I want the health care. I want all that, Jesus. And He gave it to you. But now it's our turn to give. It's time to stop being so needy. If you're a follower of Jesus, some of you have been at this a long time. You don't need to be so needy. You need to be somebody who gives and provides, who leads, who helps, who serves, who stands up and says, God, use me. 
Use me. I don't want to be the needy person anymore. I want to be the one who leads, the one who gives. See, that's my response. That's my response when I'm in the cross. I'm in relationship. I'm in relationship. I'm in the relationship. When the cross is in you, when the cross is in you, you get it. I'm going to give back. I'm going to give back. I'm not here for me. And yes, it's going to be hard. People are going to hurt you. But what did Jesus do when people took it out of him? He kept giving. He kept giving. He kept giving. No one said this was going to be easy. And see, when Jesus started teaching like this, guys, people walked away. Ooh, I didn't come here for that. <laughs> you know, your people here in the church are really friendly, and you know, it's kind of an old place, but I'm not sure this is the right fit for me. Why? Can you get real and honest about it? Can you man up and be honest? What's the real reason? It's because the cross isn't in you. The cross isn't in you. It's around you. It may be hanging around your neck. It may hang in your, in your house, on the wall, as a symbol. Oh, I'm a believer. Oh, we're not talking about believers. We're talking about people who complete, complete, complete the cross. Completing the cross means you and I need to set some people free today from not giving you the keys that they don't hold. See, we're expecting people in our lives to give us something that they don't have. You need to go to your Father in heaven to get it. And many times we walk away because, well, I'm not getting it. You're looking, you, you are looking for the wrong place. You're looking in the wrong direction for your affection. Because things haven't worked out the way you've wanted, they haven't worked out the way I've wanted all the time. But see, it's on the cross where we get hope and direction. It's at the cross we see who's really following Jesus. And we get to see ourselves too. To be honest, it's at the cross where we identify where we're at. And we realize that. God uses people to bring us to the cross. They're instruments. They're not necessarily enemies. But when the cross is in me and in you, we can change lives. But we can't water this down, okay? And the world would like to change this. You know, the majority of Christians, can I be honest? The majority of Christians today are consumers. They are shopping for what they want and what they need. But the moment it gets difficult, or over time when it gets difficult, they tap out. And they go somewhere, oh, no, no, I need to get my spiritual needs somewhere else. Wait a minute. Didn't this do it? Didn't this do it? Wow. See, the only thing that's really going to meet my need is the cross of Jesus. Everything else is superficial. Everything else is on the surface. It's not going to really meet my need. Right. Not a person. Not a place. It's at the cross. It's where I complete it. And you need to know this. When Jesus finished His ministry, there were only 120 people there gathered. You go, wow, three years of ministry, Jesus? How many people did you heal? How many villages did you visit? How many seeds did you, did you sow out there and give it to people, giving people forgiveness, giving people hope, giving people teaching? And only 120? My God. Yeah. See, because there's a lot of people who don't want to complete the cross. And I want to leave you this. We're on our journey, okay? We're on our journey. We're, we're on mile four. Okay? We're just in the middle of more to come. 
But if you don't get this one right, about this. See, because this is where people lose it. Just so you know, this is where people lose it. They lose it in relationship. Well, you offended me. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to do it again. <laughs> Just give me time. Let's hang out. Okay, let's hang out. I'll probably do it again. And guess what you're going to do? As nice as you are, as wonderful of a person as you are, guess what you're going to do? Yeah. You're going to hurt. That's what we do. And that's why we need the cross. In a marriage, can we get honest about people? married people? Come on, give me, give me some love, married people. What do we do in a marriage? What do we do in a marriage? I'll tell you what we do in the marriage. We complete, we complete the cross. We complete the cross. It's hard. And you know why most people don't stay married? And it's even happening in the church. In the church. In the church where Jesus says, I hate divorce. Don't do it. Don't do it. Even there. You know why? They don't complete the cross. And they don't. But if we do, if we do, if we do, look at what, look at what Paul says. Look at what he says, and we're going to wrap it up. Look at what Paul says in Philippians See, and he's writing this, this is crazy, he's writing this from a, from a dungeon, from a deep, dark dungeon. Wet, rats crawling around, and roaches, and, and moldy food, it smells, it smells like the bathroom. Just a nasty place. And he's in the prison for Jesus. Because he preached about Jesus. He's in the prison, and look what he says. If you've got any, any consolation, if you've got any encouragement from being united with Christ, if you've got anything from this, Anything from this. Any comfort from his, his love. If any common sharing in the Spirit. If any tenderness and compassion. If you got anything, if you got anything, then make my joy complete. If you got anything here, if you got anything here, then what? Make my joy complete by being like minded and having the same love. The same love that you got going this way, you need to give it this way. You see, the cross is a, is a clear direction. I got it going on like this, so I got to give it like this. I got to give it like this. I got to give it. I got to have the same love that my Father has shown me. Are you going to mess up this week? Any of us in this room going to mess up this week? I'll go ahead and go stand out. I'll go ahead and say it. I'm going to mess up this week. I don't want to, I shouldn't, I don't want to, but I will. And he loves me like that. He loves me like that. So what am I going to do? Being one in the Spirit and one of mind, do nothing, do nothing, do nothing, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, in humility, just like Jesus Value. That's a huge word right there. Value. Value. Others above yourself. Ooh, is that needed in our world today? Tell me what this would look like in a marriage. How good of a marriage would that be? Can I be honest with you? I got it going on like that in my marriage. And it's all because of Jesus. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. But because he gave it to me like that, I can give it like that. In humility. And let me, can I be honest with you? I'm not a humble person by nature. I'm not a humble person. I'm Cuban. Okay, if you don't know Cuban people, let me give you a little help. They're prideful. They are prideful people. Mexicans are too. Don't, don't, don't. How about, how about, how about all people? Can we just go ahead and say all people? But because of the cross, because of the cross, we can be humble. Because Jesus was the Son of God on high, came down, walked among us, lowly people, died for us. 
I can be humble. And I can consider others because Jesus considered me value, value. So I can value. And he, t- he finishes up, he says, not looking out for your own interests. So when you come to church, don't come late because you're not focused on what's going on with you. When you come to church, don't, don't be introvert and go, what time is this going to be over? 11, 11, man, I got to go. No, no, don't look out for your own interest. After church, what are you doing after church? I got to go. No, 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 no. Look out for who? Is there anybody in here with a need today? Are you ready to meet that need? Are you ready to meet that need? See, because Jesus met my needs, I can meet other people's needs. And, 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 and look out to the interests of others and, and your relationships. In your relationships. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, in your relationships. We're almost done. In your relationships. In your relationships. Over there on the side, against the wall. I see you in your relationships. In your relationships. In the back. In the back. In your relationships. In your relationships. How should my relationships be? With one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Mm, Man, that's a high calling. Wow, is that a high calling. But I want to get there. And what it means is you got to stay at the cross. You got to stay in there with each other. Don't focus on those that have walked away. Uh uh. Value. Focus on the ones who've stayed. And focus on the ones who need, who need help. There's so many people out there that need help. And if they get this, People out there, if they get this, guess what they're going to do when they get it? Boy, they're going to be, I was one of those out there. And when I got it like this, I started giving it like that. I was all in for Jesus. Ministry, mission work, what does he need? What's needed? Let's go. So, we're going to take the communion right now, and, and, and I really want to encourage you now as we take the communion, listen, if you're not ready to complete the cross, don't take communion. Don't do it. Wait. Wait. Think it over. You see, taking the communion is serious business. It's not just, you know, a ritual, something we do. Oh, the bread and the wine and Jesus' body and His blood. No, 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 no. This is reaffirming. This is reaffirming your decision that I will complete, I will complete the cross. I'm all in. And because Jesus, you gave it like this, you gave it like this with your blood and your body, you gave it like this, I decide today I'm going to give it like this. That's what it means to take the communion. Okay, it's a decision. And it's also self-reflection. Self-reflect. I haven't been doing it. And I got to speak to so and so, and I got to get this rec- worked out. We got to, we got we got to get the ironing board out. We got a lot of wrinkles in our relationship. We got to iron it out. We got to work it out. Okay, we're doing laundry today in church. Okay, it's really important. That's what it means to take communion. Think about what you're doing, and if you're not ready, don't take it. It's okay. You're not sinning. Nobody's going to look at you. And if you're next to the person who doesn't take it, don't look at them. They got to work it out. And I'm, I'm proud they worked it out. You know what? Peter, Peter wasn't at the cross, but he worked it out, didn't he? Oh, and he changed the world. Changed the world. Okay, Andrew, history tells us he went to Africa. Mm, he worked it out, didn't he? He wasn't at the cross. There are a number of people who weren't at the cross, but they worked it out. You can work it out. Pray with me. Father, we thank you. Thank you for for Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for the cross. God, we want to ask you to forgive us. Forgive us for our focus. Forgive us for our selfishness. Forgive us for taking for granted what we have. God, we pray to love like Jesus. We pray to love like Mary, to love like John, to love like the Apostle Paul. God, we need you. Forgive us. And I pray we can work out our relationship with you and with each other. Because Jesus said it, Father, when we do it, the world will recognize there you are. 
That's your people. But we need you in this moment. Please forgive us. Give us a new start. And I pray that we will follow up and have conversations and work it out. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Help us. And we pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.